I guess we should start with Benjamin LeBay and what the research program he's known for illustrates about free will. And the reason I think this is a good place to start is that, as you mentioned, a lot of free will debates begin with this, but you don't think it's the right place to begin. So I'm going <laughs> to have us begin yeah. there anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start off with a light touch here and say that I think it's a complete waste of time. Um, I don't know if he's LeBay or Libet or what, but like read any paper on the subject and somewhere by the second paragraph, it's required that you mention this guy. Uh, this was Benjamin Libet LeBay, uh, UCSF scientist who in 1983 produced the most famous experiment of all time, supposedly teaching you that there's no such thing as free will or teaching you that there still is such a thing as free will. This is the study where like you take a volunteer, you sit him down and you say, here's a button, press this button whenever you feel like it. And look at this clock here with this big sweeping second hand and tell me the instant you form the intent to press that button. And what we're going to do is wire up your muscles here so we can tell exactly when your muscles started to move your finger. And well, it turns out that like on the average, you start moving your finger about 200 milliseconds, two tenths of a second um, after you form the intent to do that. But they've also hooked you up to an EEG, an electroencephalogram ancient technique for picking up brainwave patterns before brain imaging got more sophisticated. And there's a particular waveform that they could look for in a part of the brain where your neurons are telling your muscles what to do. And you could detect this waveform at the time that this motor cortical area is starting to tell your muscles to move. And the amazing thing is you could detect this waveform about three tenths of a second before people said they first formed the intent to move their finger. Oh my God, your brain knows before you do. Okay, okay, let's not be dualists. Oh my God, your brain has decided before you are consciously aware of, you think of having formed that intent. There is no free will, any of that. This is incredible. And people have been fighting about this one ever since. Like if you're a scientist and somebody thinks you came up with the wrong finding or wrong interpretation, you are totally lucky if they're still going out of their way to correct you five years after you after you published because you're usually just consigned to like oblivion at that point. 40 years later now, people are still publishing articles with titles of like, Libet had no idea what he was talking about or stuff. Fights over, is there a difference between when you form an intent and when you become aware of the intent, is there a difference between intent and an urge? Is there, does pressing a button tell you anything about moral decision making? They're still fighting about it. And again, for my money, it's a complete waste of time because no one is saying where'd the intent come from in the first place? how the person wind up being the sort of person who would push the button at that point. And I don't mean in this very proximal sense, but how did this wind up being somebody who would be able to go to university? how they develop an interest in psychology? Why they decide that they were altruistic enough and curious enough to sign up for a psych experiment? Why did they have the self-regulation to actually show up on time? Why did they not have this like perverse desire to prove they're smarter than the researcher and mess up their answers on purpose? Why didn't they wind up to this be the sort of person who would step into that room and see that everybody was look, looking at the previous subject and looking at the printout and because they were all distracted to quick grab somebody's laptop and run out the door? Why did they wind up being the sort of person who would wind up in this spot and push that button at that second because they felt they had an intent to do that? And that's 99.9% .9 of what's going on. And if you don't ask that, you're wasting your time because where all of the lack of free will came in is how did biology and its interactions environment make you the person you were so that, should, that is who you would be at that instant? Well, b before I respond, I think it's my high school French that has determined that I pronounce his name uh, Le Bay instead of Libet, 
Is that I just when I see that ET, I just it's a reflex. It's just got to be a. But I'm also sure you get a an inordinate amount of free will jokes thrown your way, and it must <laughs> drive you nuts at this point. Well, I would say in terms of my roots, I failed French twice in high school, and thus will never ever be willing to pronounce a word with a silent et at the end, just to somehow my blows against francophones. Interesting. And I saw that my my first guess would be that maybe it was because you were not that good at foreign languages, but I saw that you were already teaching yourself Swahili, was it, in, in like middle school or high school? Or maybe that was Wikipedia just lying to me? No, actually, this was for my, my baboon field work. I was like, by the time I was like a ninth grader or so, I not only knew I was going to be a primatologist, but I wanted to do field work in East Africa, so I decided it was time to start learning Swahili. That said, subsequent to that, after then taking two years of Swahili in college, and then spending a proportion of each year for 33 years in East Africa, I'm still pretty crappy at Swahili, so I'm not good at languages at all. Like, like my wife came out sort of eight years into the whole process and spent about a bunch of seasons there with me and she knew more Swahili after a month than I did after at that point like nine summers spent there so yeah so I'm not good at languages but nonetheless I'm not willing to say Monsieur Libé yeah he's no, I, Libet I, I, I understand entirely I have a deep seated re resentment against the French for my because of my French teachers but <laughs> I do do like the language but well the the, the formation of a t intent i see as kind of like your your master argument so you don't really need to rely on le bay for anything or libet for anything but do you think that this at least points to a flaw with our to use that word again i mean folk intuition of the role of consciousness in free will uh, uh, with the caveat that it might not play the role that we think it plays in these very short-term, rapidly made decisions? Yeah. And somewhere in there, the, the LeBay fistfights come down to whether consciousness is required to be the mediator of intent, even if the intent formed before you were conscious of it. Yeah, some of the stuff we do we're conscious of. An awful lot of what we do, especially in some emotionally aroused circumstances, what we believe our conscious explanation is, is just post hoc rationalization. You know, there's there's all sorts of revision, revisionism going on, sort of people who try to understand the neurobiology of moral decision making. And the starting point <clears throat> is one well entrenched in folk, folk intuitions, which is we think our way to a moral decision. And what all sorts of interesting stuff is showing increasingly, no, we most of the time, or even a lot of really important circumstances, we feel our way to our moral decisions, and then we come up with a post hoc rationalization. Uh, guy at NYU, Jonathan Haidt, has done wonderful research showing how much that is the case. And you can tell that your emotional part of the brain has made a decision about a moral sort of quandary, and that occurs before you could see the cortical part of your brain has made it, has supposedly made its decision. What it's doing is making up an explanation for why the emotional stats actually makes perfect sense. And we see that all the time. We see that every time you get somebody who says, you know, I can't quite tell you why, I, I can't put my finger on it, but it's wrong when they do that. That's them showing they have not come up with the sort of cortical rationalization for what is basically an irrational emotional decision until suddenly they say, oh, no, 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 I get it. It's because of their money lending practices. It's because of what their ancestors did to my ancestors in the Battle of Culloden or something 300 years. It's because that's why it actually makes sense What, why I have that opinion. No. And most of the time, in really aroused circumstances, what we believe are our rational conscious explanations for why we've done what we've done. 
has nothing to do with what we've done. <laughs>